We are gathered here today to mourn the loss of the DC Extended Universe. Burr, burr, burr. Wait, that was the wrong thing. <laughs> there we go. No great loss. We're... <laughs> All right, and that wasn't what the segue I was expecting from weird ass taps, but what have you? <laughs> Welcome to Under the Bridge, everybody. Welcome to Under the Bridge. I'm Cody, aka the Scarlet Troll, and I am Greg, aka Greg. And this is usually the part where we roll out a plethora of news, but because we're recording super early on account of the incoming holiday, yes, I don't have a lot of news. And by incoming, we do indeed mean like two days before Christmas. <laughs> yeah, it, it, just. In case, I don't think I've ever actually mentioned, we usually record on Monday nights, but since Monday is Christmas, that's not happening. Yeah, no. And Christmas Eve wasn't looking particularly doable either, so we decided, forget it, so we just came back from Aquaman the Lost Kingdom. Which we'll go get into more detail in later. Oh, definitely. But, <laughs> before we do, I have some very grim news. Yeah... Which is that it has been confirmed that Warner Brothers Discovery and Paramount Global have held talks on a possible merger. And so it begins. It, it is the circle of tax life. <laughs> <laughs> or tax death. Take your pick. The circle of cash. <laughs> it so, pollutes us all. Someone get an oncologist to save us from this f***ing cancer. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I'll just remove myself now. Oh. <laughs> huh. Now, it has been said by the source, it was all rather preliminary. Mm. CEO of Paramount's controlling shareholder, National Amusements, is on a bit of a listening tour to see what she might be able to get if she decides to sell the company or part of it. Okay. Now, I, I gotta imagine, this can't be, this can't be allowed, right? There's got to be something that somewhere where someone will go, it's like, okay, guys, you've got to pay attention to this. This is clearly the end result of this dude cutting project after project after department after shitty things said during the strike. This is clearly the M.O. from start to finish. <laughs> yeah, and on top of, it's not even, it's not even just Warner Bros. I'm concerned about. Paramount's not doing too well either. Mm. They've got their own debt problems. Do they now? Yeah, so it's the case of, okay, if these two merge... That doesn't help the problem. They're both still drowning in debt. Oh god, this might be like the time Sears bought Kmart. And some people who are listening to this might be too young to understand that reference. Oh god. <laughs> yeah, just think, we might have listeners who don't know what Sears or Kmart are. <laughs> oh, the humanity. <laughs> the huge eh, manatees. Uh, if, if we're talking later end stages for both those companies, you're not missing much. Point is. No, absolutely not. <laughs> point is, this is still not great. <laughs> The possibility has been scrutinized yep. heavily. Yes, as, as it, it should be. Yeah, 100%. Here are some choice quotes from a Deadline article about it. Oh boy. City media analyst Jason Bazinet told Deadline he sees little upside to, combina to the combination. Investors watch CBS and Viacom merge, they watch Disney and Fox merge, and they watch Discovery buy scripts and merge with Warner Bros. Discovery, and none of those were the elixir that allowed you to generate huge amounts of cash flow. Eh, is that really the case for Disney merging with Fox? It didn't help. Really? Eh. They spent like ninety million dollars. No, what was it? Nine hundred mil? It had to have been like nine hundred. Yeah, there's no. If if Disney got anything for ninety mil, then that's amazing. <laughs> that's probably less than they bought Marvel for. Thinking about it. Yeah. I'm googling it. <laughs> what the 71. hell? Seventy-one point three bill. I was. I... <laughs> yeah, that sounds more like it. <laughs> this is why I don't run companies. I have no sense of money. <laughs> No, you probably do, and that's why they don't want you. He's like, no, we need you to over-budget. But why would I over-budget? Because numbers. <laughs> yeah, we need to make it seem like a big, important purchase so the shareholders are happy, but doesn't that just get us more in debt? Shh. We don't talk about that. That's for the bean counters to figure out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what a wretched idea. Indeed. One film finance exec told Deadline he was struggling to see the logic. What I want to know is, how are shareholders going to benefit? How do these two companies pay down their debt and build value so their share price, which has been in the toilet, can grow? That's the neat part. It doesn't. Right? It's like, <laughs> there's no win here. All that happens is they merge and they slash more stuff. Yeah. I'd say this can't be allowed, but Disney Fox got through, so... Yeah, well, that was after Congress got in. Yeah. Wouldn't it be something that Congress got in saying, it's like, no, we need to approve this because both of your values are too shitty. Mm. <laughs> mm. 
I don't like it. No, not another. No, absolutely not. Get, I don't know. There's no fix. No, there, there really isn't. The fix is beyond my ability, because yeah. nobody's paying me millions of dollars to figure it out. Right. Adding on to the pile of Warner Brothers projects that will never be, it has been confirmed that the Zatanna film being written by Emerald Fennel has been cancelled. What is the Zatanna film again? Zatanna's the backwards talk magician. What? The... Hold on, let me pull up a picture. Since we're right <laughs> the backwards talk magician. Her. Oh, she's hot. Yeah. <laughs> That's not the important part. But, <laughs> but, she's, but she's a superhero. Yeah. Really? Yeah. She, okay. does, she, she talks backwards and whatever she says is a spell. Okay. Alright. Yeah. I, of course, this is knowing nothing other than her basic premise and looking at pictures of her, but... How was there supposed to be a movie based around this? <laughs> well, I mean, you could do... There was a really good run by Paul Dini, who also, ha you can tell, had a real fun time writing the character. Mm. Uh, Zatanna... Dude had a... Dude, I, I don't know the best <laughs> way to put this. It seems like... It seems like Zatanna was basically his 2D crush. I mean... Yeah. He went on to, <laughs> He went on to marry a stage magician, so we know his so so we oh, know did when he, he, like they, wait, did he really? Yeah. <laughs> oh, so he basically made Hey, you know what? I feel like that's like the best thing you can do as a creative. If you can figure out a way to make money or just have general happiness involving your fetish of choice, <laughs> then you're doing pretty good. <laughs> oh, there we go. <laughs> this man both got his perfect wife, probably. And made money off his fetish. <laughs> you can't really go wrong with that. Nah, nah. <laughs> so, uh, Fennel appeared on the Happy, Sad, Confused podcast, and when asked about it, she said, no, it's not happening. Mm. You know what I loved? I bet this was all before Promising Young Woman, actually. This was something I was working on before Promising Young Woman. It was when J.J. Abrams, I think, had just arrived at Warner Brothers and was going to reboot the Dark Universe, and they were going to make this new kind of, like, villain hero universe. I think he might be mixing it up with Universal's Dark Universe. Yeah, because, say, wasn't... Didn't they try to reboot Dark Universe with one movie and it didn't No, work? that wasn't a reboot. That was just a start. Oh. So, I, I think maybe she thinks that the Justice League Dark Universe is connected to Dark Universe. Because she does say... Uh, I don't know a huge amount about the superhero genre. It's not a genre that I naturally gravitate towards. So I was like, okay, well, I'd love to know, like, how does one make a movie like that for people like me, who maybe don't know so much and wouldn't necessarily buy a ticket the first time around. Right. Which is fair. Which is completely fair. You don't have to know jack shit about these to make one of these movies. Yeah. You just gotta be willing to actually take a look at the material. Yes. Because if you only gave it to fans... <laughs> You can't see you the can't, face so, I'm making. So I'm just saying, like, unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen, because this is a radio show, you can't see the face that Cody's making. That was a dead eye, like... <laughs> it's just like, no. <laughs> no, don't let fans make anything. Yeah, it's like, you can you can have it where people who don't know anything about the material can still make it if they're good with the material. Jessica Jones comes to mind. <laughs> yeah. Honestly... I'd rather somebody who doesn't know jack shit but is willing to do the research does it than a mega ultra uber fan who is confident they have a handle on it. Which, when they don't. Because, mm. Well, it's the thing of, like, I feel like the fan would get all the fan things correct, but probably not all the things that actually make a movie do well to a general right. audience. Right, Because you can make great fan service that still sucks with a general audience. Case in point, High School DXD. <laughs> I want to make a Golden Age Shazam movie, including all the unfortunate racial stuff. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see how that goes over. You can't, you, you, you know and you we'll, can't do that, right? Just try and stop me. And we'll call it Captain Marvel. <laughs> <laughs> Jim, I don't know how to tell you this, but we can't do that. Mm. We just, we don't, we, we don't have, who's going to stop us? Marvel! <laughs> Marvel is going to stop us. Mm. So I'm not surprised to hear this project isn't happening. It is one of the many, many things in the DCEU that went completely unrealized. And I'm sure James Gunn must attack on in a different direction. I do hope we see Zatanna, though, yeah. eventually. Because she's an interesting character. Knowing nothing about her, I could see her coming in as a side character, if anything. Ah, I could definitely or, headline a movie. Yeah. Or Justice Le or be a major player in Justice League Dark. Because you don't actually have to build up Justice League Dark. You can just throw them all in. Fair. If you wanted. Fair. 
I mean, you did that for half a Justice League. And literally... <laughs> Anyways. We're not going to talk about that. Yeah. I've got one bit of non-superhero related news. Which is that Stream 7, in addition to firing Melissa Barrera and losing Jenna Ortega, has now lost its director. <laughs> is this going to join Blade in the list of movies that will never be made? Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? Jesus Christ. Apparently he actually exited weeks ago. Oh. Oh, okay. Yeah. He called it a dream job that turned into a nightmare. So, Hollywood in general, continue. <laughs> <laughs> And my heart did break for everyone involved. Everyone. But it's time to move on. It, everyone. Except for my bosses. <laughs> <laughs> they don't have hearts. <laughs> I have nothing more to add to the conversation other than I hope Wes's legacy thrives and lifts above the din of a divided world. Hmm. What he and Kevin created is something amazing, and I was honored to have even the briefest moment basking in their glow. Okay. So, if I were Spyglass... <laughs> I do a little bit of course correcting. And by a little bit, I we mean like a full like ninety degree D one GP style drift <laughs> into a different direction. Yeah, I mean, like you know how you know how they said, oh, Jenna Ortega couldn't do it because of scheduling conflicts. Well, now you got nothing but time. Yeah. To think about how you should probably pay her more. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> Scream six did good. Much to your dismay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just so, tr- why don't they just keep fucking hitting him? It's because I would take the tension out. Yeah, I know. I mean, it would be, I feel like they should do, if they do that again, they do that, but they have to have the right choice of music for a scene like that. They can fuck the police. By <laughs> 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 NWA. <laughs> this is the point where I go in a trailer time, but, um, I couldn't really find anything. Yeah. <laughs> And in the interest of moving this along, this is where I would normally go to box office, except it's midway through the weekend, so I don't have exact numbers yet. Yes, because once again, Monday is Christmas. <laughs> yep. Uh, to that end, it per deadline at least, it looks like Aquaman 2 is coming in at $43 million roughly domestic, hmm. Walk at $30 million plus, Illumination's Migration is coming in at about $18 mil. I am genuinely surprised that Migration is number three on that. There aren't a lot of kids in movies at the box office right now. No, but that's what I'm saying. It's like I figured because of that, Migration would, would be number one by default. Oh. Uh, nah. Hmm. You gotta remember, the first Aquaman still made a billion dollars. That had to come from somewhere. That's fair. That's true. But, uh, no, that's not looking great as as opening weekends go. Yeah. But get woke, go broke, am I right? Uh, okay. <laughs> When the Marvels does it, that's what happens when you got an agenda. When Aquaman does it, mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> you think we should do the DCEU look back first, or should we do the Aquaman review first? Uh, I feel like we should do the DCEU because that'll be that'll be a much more entertaining lead in into Aquaman. It's like, so after all of this depression, <laughs> how does where does Aquaman stand? <laughs> where does Aquaman two stand? <laughs> you're right. You're right. That is better. So the release of Aquaman two. Uh, yeah, Aquaman the Lo- and the Lost Kingdom. Wait, is it and the Lost Kingdom it's or a- the Lost Kingdom? You know, I don't actually remember. <laughs> I, just, I was just staring at the screen. I was just looking at the title card. Aquaman and, and the, the Lost, Lost Kingdom. Kingdom. Okay. I thought there was an and in there. The tide is turning, the poster said. Oh... <laughs> Oh, just you wait. Oh, the winds of change. <laughs> and it's leading into a potential merger. Did I get rid of the... Oh, ah. Did I get rid of the article? I did. Mm. Let me pull that back up. Anyways, with the release of Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom, I finally did it. <laughs> the DC Extended Universe... Has come a, to a close. ...is officially at an end, yes. Will we miss it? Not really. No. <laughs> there are some highlights... There but, are there are some bits and pieces I will miss. Mm-hmm. On the whole, what a fucking train wreck! Yeah, what an absolute like th- they could make a movie <laughs> out of out of this whole thing and how not to make a movie universe. Oh, a hundred percent! I would genuinely watch that. Wrong headed from go. Mm-hmm. Ever okay? Maybe not straight from go. Man of Steel wasn't a bad starting point. Yes, in the sense of it set a tone. It did relatively well financially, and it 
started off on a strong foot in the sense of introducing a character who you could rally this universe around. Yeah. And then it took a header off a cliff. <laughs> like, real bad. And it's funny... Like, by the second movie, basically. <laughs> yeah. And it's really funny because... Looking back, back when I was still making Scream at the Camera videos, which I got rid of because they were fucking cringe, mm. I called Man of Steel, I don't remember if I just called it one of the worst superhero movies I'd ever seen, or one of the worst movies I'd ever seen. Either way, boy, I was fucking naive. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, we didn't expect our expectations to go even lower. And that's, Ten years ago? Yeah, and, and, and granted, that's, for me, that's coming from someone who actually did enjoy Man of Steel. And the funniest thing is, it's not even DC movies that lowered the bar that much, although some of them helped. Yes. <laughs> there were a lot of other movies that helped lower the bar in that. Mm. I did not watch an awful lot of movies in 2013, so I owe Man of Steel an apology. Mm -hmm. You weren't great. Arguably, you weren't even good. But you weren't bad. You weren't... You certainly weren't the worst thing to happen in this universe. <laughs> right. Because I still maintain the worst thing to happen to this universe, just in terms of... It's a multifaceted discussion. Batman v Superman. Worst thing to happen to the DC Extended Universe. <laughs> mm. By which I mean, it wasn't the worst performing thing, because it made just shy of a billion. Yeah. So it wasn't a flop. God, no. But I think it's pretty telling in a post-Avengers world where where a Captain America movie was pulling down a billion dollars. I mean, admittedly, it was kind of a team-up movie. Yeah. But where the Avengers were pulling down a billion, an Iron Man movie was pulling down a billion, Marvel just got Spider-Man back, and we were sort of in that golden age of superhero movies. Didn't which... Guardians 1 also do a billion? No, Guardians 1 did like 700-something mil. Okay. But that's a team of actual nobodies. Yeah. Nobody knew who the Guardians were before that movie came out, and nobody cared. Right. <laughs> but they managed to pull that off. And here you were, the first live-action on-screen theatrical meeting of Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman, and it couldn't pull down a billion. Yeah. And I think that kind of says it all. Yeah, it was it it was not a good movie. It definitely it felt like they were trying to fast forward a lot of the bringing up of everyone together that in in an effort to if anything beat Marvel to their first Avengers movie, even though it took place many years four later. years later. Yeah, but it's the thing of like no, there's still a thing of like character development and making the audience care about the people that you're trying to portray and all that. A lot of that didn't happen. Hell, I, be I believe that movie was the first introduction of... Or no, I'm thinking of Justice League. I'm just jumping ahead to Justice League a little bit. But even still, I still maintain that argument. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was the first appearance of most of them. Just most of them didn't even really get lines. Because mm. Aquaman, Flash, and Cyborg showed up when the movie dead stops its plot to show you sizzle reels of what's coming up. The Flash thing is still so damn strange to me. Oh, that's right, he did get lines! He was in that stupid nightmare bit! Yeah. <laughs> but rather, it was after the nightmare, and then Bruce has a nightmare inside of the nightmare, which doesn't... Ugh. Yeah, the nightmare bits... I, what were the point of the nightmare bits again? It was to foreshadow Justice League, which ended up getting chopped into pieces, because the problem is, they gave it to somebody who was interested in telling one singular, multi-part story that was gonna basically wreck a bunch of the toys... Mm. But Warner Brothers wanted to keep the toy box open. So it's like, gee, maybe you should have, I don't know, thought about it, given it to somebody else. Yeah. I have my problems with Zack Snyder, but you can only blame so much of it on him. Yeah. Some of it has to go to the people who gave him that much power to begin with. You let him fuck this up. You did that. Yeah, it's like you went, oh, this sounds like a good idea. Yeah, that's like a, so much money. Actually, production stars like, oh, crap, this is what we have approved? Uh, it's like, yes, this, you told me I could do this. We talked about it. Please tell me you didn't see have the, your dollar sign sunglasses on while I was talking about you. I might have. Maybe slowly <laughs> tucks it back in his shirt pocket. <laughs> oh man. So that was that was not a good foot. And then when they saw that everybody kind of hated it, rightfully so. Yes. They started pivoting really heavily, <laughs> which unfortunately led to some total inconsistencies. And didn't change the fact that you already had Justice League set and ready to go before you'd introduced half the characters. Yes. So, in terms of outright damage, I think it's hard to top Batman v Superman. I don't even think it's the worst one in the DCEU. Oh, like as far as an actual movie? Yeah, because oh, the yeah, worst no. one, probably Suicide Squad? You know what? Yeah, the original Suicide yeah, Squad. Yeah, the, yeah, the, the 2016 one. Suicide Squad. Yeah. In terms of quality, I would definitely agree with that. Because, like, okay, 
I can, I can, I, I am, I can, and I have watched a multiple hour video essay dissecting <laughs> everything wrong with Batman v Superman. Right. But I can acknowledge where the movie has a few things that work well for it. Yeah. I'm hard pressed to remember a single fucking thing about Suicide Squad that worked, like actually worked. I guess maybe Margot Robbie, but they didn't. G- I feel like the only things that kind of worked to any appreciable degree in that movie were Margot Robbie. It feels like an entire sub industry just came from Margot Robbie doing that role, and also just really affirming how god awful Amanda Waller is. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because that when I saw that movie, that was the, honestly the first time in a while where a character appeared on screen, and I just outright said, "I really need you to fucking die." <laughs> I mean, it doesn't help that it feels like anything arguably good in that movie either disappeared afterward, yeah, or was made significantly better by other people later on. Right. Case in point, Margot Robbie and Viola Davis as Amanda Waller. Right, yeah. But then you got stuff that just disappeared, like Will Smith's dead shot. <laughs> and Captain Boomerang, who got completely shafted in The Suicide Squad, and I get why they did it, but... Mm. Yeah, no. I feel like, even though I very much enjoyed Idris Elba in The Suicide Squad, I feel like his character and all that, and how they had him, was basically, no, we have Will Smith at home. Will Smith at home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hard to argue with. Like, literally the most memorable thing about Suicide Squad for me is, This is Katana! She's got (laughs) my back! I would advise not getting killed by her. Her sword traps the souls of its victims. Rick Flagg is basically a completely (laughs) different feeling character in the Suicide Squad. It's the same fucking guy. Yeah. He even looks different. I don't know how they pulled it off. I don't believe it's the same person. I think... Testosterone. What an absolutely terrible (laughs) fucking hot topic display of a movie. Yes. Topped off with... One of the only actually bad Jokers we've ever had in anything. Mm. Do you know how hard it is to fuck up the Joker? (laughs) It's so hard to fuck up the Joker, Zach Galifianakis couldn't do it. (laughs) Zach Galifianakis is a better Joker than Jared Leto. I think most things are better than Jared Leto, if I'm being completely honest. Yeah. (laughs) It's crazy, though. Yes. Oh, boy. After that, we moved into the... Tumultuous year of 2017. I think potentially, I think in terms of peaks, that's like the craziest year. Because first we had Wonder Woman. Yes. Which is was, good. Which was, which was a good time. Pissed me off as a history person. I bet. <laughs> but but a good time. I bet. <laughs> yeah, it's like, I, if anything, it did make me realize, like, you know what? I do need to look into more into how comic books, both Marvel and DC, what they do with historical figures in their media. Because, holy shit. (laughs) Oh, that gets interesting, especially because they keep fucking rebooting. Mm. So, it's different generations of superheroes handling different stuff, depending on where you are in their timeline. Okay, so what do they- do they also have Wonder Woman kill Ludendorff in every reboot? No. (laughs) uh, Most of this- I think in a lot of- because superheroes didn't really start until after then. Mm -hmm. So, it was really World War II that was the bigger thing. Wait, when did Superman debut? Was it 19... 19- I want to say it was in the 30s. 1938, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, it was post-World War One. so really World War Two was the big concern. And I, I think the, the MacGuffin that they justified to explain why World War Two still happened is that Hitler had the Spear of Destiny. I remember reading about that, and you know what? Honestly, that was something that got me to check out of watch, reading the DC wiki for a while. All right. <laughs> Just like, oh, wait, that's... A, that and finding out about the whole, like, how they had the multiverse... Thing too, because keep in mind, this was when I first was introduced to comics by oh, yeah. and all that. So finding about that not only multiverses as a thing, but within DC, one of the multiverses is literally world ruled by Nazi versions of all of the superheroes. Yep, Earth X. Yeah, I was just like, <laughs> I don't think I can deal with this, dog. <laughs> yeah. Especially because even the multiverse itself kept rebooting because it's DC. Right. What a what a mm, th- this new the fact that they're ending the DC EU and starting again with something entirely different is completely on brand. For yes, them. it's like oh, you thought this was just limited to the comics, surprise. Yeah. So you get it back to Wonder Woman. The thing about Wonder Woman is Wonder Woman. I have always maintained is a really really good, bordering on phenomenal second act of a movie. Mm. The problem is the first movie's very paint the first act is very paint by numbers, which to be fair, not which, bad. It's it, just it, it, I've seen it all before and it pales in comparison to the second act. And yes. then the third act is so cartoonishly over the top that it threatens to like 
send the whole movie crashing down between, oh, actually, no, Ares, like, it's like, oh, Ares wasn't responsible for this, but when you kill him, it just so happens everybody stops fighting, so that's kind of a mixed message. <laughs> You've got Ares and his stupid fucking mustache still visible under the helmet. Because <laughs> apparently he, he actually looks like David Thewlis under the helmet. What is that? Nice. <laughs> You've got Wonder Woman running through CGI wreckage with her legs blurring because the, uh, God, that was terrible, and just slaughtering people <laughs> left and right because her boy toy died. Right. Wow, actually, you know what? The third act of Wonder Woman was pretty good foreshadowing for Wonder Woman 84. Oof. <laughs> the writing was there. The signs oh, were there. Oh, yes. Yes, indeed. Oh, but Christ. we'll get to that. Yes, indeed, we will. <laughs> because also in 2017, we got we got Justice League. So moving on to the next film. <laughs> That really was a nothing movie. It was a total nothing burger of a movie. Except for the part with, um... Except for the part with Cyborg and Flash grave robbing. I knew you were going to lead into that, because I think that was the first time I went to see a movie with you, and I got audibly angry. Yep. You were more pissed at it than I was. I was having a great time with that scene. It was stupid. Anyway, last time I watched Justice League, I, 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 I drank four beers to get through it. Oh my god. It wasn't beers, no, actually, it was hard cider. Even, even still. No, it was Angry Orchard. What does Angry Orchard count as? Uh... Depending on, um, I don't know, actually. I feel like it'd be somewhere in the middle. Point is, I got four in. Yes. <laughs> By the end, I was not coherent. No. <laughs> I do not drink a lot. But, no, Justice League is a nothing of a movie. You've got everybody getting shown up by Superman. Racially charged. Racially charged. <laughs> You've got Batman being all weird and sundere towards Superman. <laughs> Which is like, Jesus Christ, just make out already. I thought you didn't like me. I don't. Not. It's like <laughs> just make out already. <laughs> just be a just be like an anime protagonist for crying out Superman loud. Superman was a beacon of hope. The last the last th two movies with him beg to differ. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, for real. The smoldering wreckage of Metropolis begs to differ. <laughs> yeah, Justice League was not great, no. and arguably that was the real point where all the terrible mistakes they'd made leading up to it really came home to roost because you had this big deal about all these united about all these great heroes united, half of them suck. <laughs> yeah. In fact, five-sixths of them suck. Because mm. they needed to bring Superman back from the dead to Frankenstein experiment going wrong just to bail them out of a problem. <sighs> we then skip a year, for the most part, because Aquaman didn't come out until late December 2018. That's right, it was a good year plus. And it fooled me. <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> I saw it in theaters and I thought, ah, oh, that's a pretty good time, actually. Yeah, it's like, this ain't bad. And it still stands out because Aquaman is the highest grossing movie in the DCEU. Is it now? Yeah. I figured one of those Shazam movies would be. It made over a billion. Mm. I'm pretty sure it's the only one that did. I don't know if that's damning or... <laughs> that is... I mean, I think a lot of it came from China. I don't know if that's damning or... <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember Aquaman no, I anymore. Because I, I, I think the last time I watched it was 2019. Yeah, yeah, I don't remember a lot of it myself. And I'm not going to rewatch it anytime soon. Yeah, no. Not even with Aquaman The Lost Kingdom having just come out. All right, and then moving swiftly along. And then things started ticking up for a little bit, actually. Yes. Because we got Shazam in 2019. Which was good. Shazam was a really it, good time. It was good the entire way through. And it's like, all right, we've got a change of pace. Are we going to keep this quality? <laughs> one, of the, one of the best ones in yes. the DCEU. It was... It was a little more optimistic, but it still had a little bit of an edge. Oh, yeah. Not a lot. But it had, like, that sort of... It didn't have maturity. It had immaturity. Yeah, it had, but it also used its immaturity very well. Yeah. It was a really good movie about a kid who turns into an adult superhero and what that would mean and what that would feel like. and Well, also, like, dealing with his own demons of, like, not knowing where he comes from and trying to... While well, another f group of people who clearly care about him are just trying to be like, Hey, we care about you, but I don't know you like that. Yeah. <laughs> We're not actually brother and sister. Gets real sad. Oh, yeah. Also, it had the great post credit scene with Superman showing up from the neck down. <laughs> which was funny, but also just kind of kickstarted their unwillingness to commit to anything anymore. Yeah. Yeah. But I do still love Freddy's reaction. It was just like, oh! <laughs> <laughs> So good. I wonder if that was Henry Cavill who did, who did that, too. No. Uh, no, you could bet. If, if it had been Henry Cavill, they would have shown his face. True. They would have been like, no, guys, trust me, he's still here. He's actually fucking he's here. He's still on board, I swear. <laughs> Look, here's his face. 
And that even kept going a little bit with Birds of Prey and the Fantabulous Emancipation of one Harley Quinn. Yes. Stupid title. A very stupid title, but still a pretty good movie. Pretty decent. The biggest problem I have is still that it was, they just call it Harley Quinn. Yeah. And uh, Harley Quinn and the Birds of Prey or something, because, like, you made it sound like a Birds of Prey movie, and it wasn't. They're barely in it. Mm -hmm. And the less said about what you did to Cassandra Cain, the better. I will never (laughs) forgive you for that. I am the crossbow killer. I am the crossbow killer. That was so funny. I'm sorry. For fuck's sake. That was still one of my favorite parts of the movie. I'm so sorry. (laughs) It's like, you have anger issues. I do not have anger issues. God, I love her. Mary Elizabeth Winstead is the best part of that movie. Oh, yeah. Aside from maybe Ewan McGregor. Oh, yeah, true. Who was Black Mask. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. That was a funny movie. It was stylistic. Oh, yeah. It was very decently well done, and I actually like Harley Quinn in that, which is... More than I can say for a lot of things with Harley Quinn in it. We see Margot Robbie doing a line of cocaine. (laughs) Yeah. But Birds of Prey is a good time. Birds of Prey was a good time. Shame it kind of got fucked by the pandemic. Yes. Yes, it did. Which also didn't help Warner Brothers' situation. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Nor nor did the next movie. (laughs) No. Next up, it's Wonder Woman 1984, which... Who boy. (sighs) Who It's a real Saturday morning cartoon of a movie, but with more sexual assault. But am I more... No, wait, not sexual assault, but sex crimes? I would say sex crimes. It's like, what, like, sex crimes. Absolutely sex crimes. Yeah. <laughs> sex crimes that the, that, 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 that the movie is weirdly <laughs> reluctant to admit happened. Yeah. And I know I shouldn't be that hung up on it, but, like, man, if that's not... If that doesn't feel character assassinating for Diana... Yeah. Not even just that, although that doesn't help. But the fact that, like, the world is crashing down around her, she doesn't have her powers, and she refuses to give them up because that means being sad about some guy she met in the 1910s. <laughs> it already pissed me off enough when Cap went back in time to go be with somebody he knew for the... I mean, he was in suspended animation that whole time, so yeah, yeah. that made a little more sense. I yeah. still don't think it totally fits with the rest of Endgame. No, but, but it's a more understandable motive, because it's thing like, I lost all this time through... Mostly no fault of my own. Yeah, and admittedly at that point you'd have what was it like uh, ten years or something to work through it, but that's still I can get that. Yeah, Wonder Woman had like sixty. Yeah, she had like sixty fucking years, <laughs> and she's still pining over this one fucking guy. I mean, it's Chris Pine; he's pretty hot. Yeah, he is pretty hot. <laughs> it's still like, girl, get over it. <laughs> Jesus. Also, let this movie stand for having a, a absolutely ridiculous amount of clothing-based foreshadowing. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Also, Linda Carter cameo for... I mean, I like Linda Carter. Yeah. But it still felt weird. Like, you could have had her play an actual canon character instead of making one up. (laughs) Waste of Pedro Pascal. That's right, Pedro Pascal was in that movie. Yeah, we just went over this. Fuck. Oh, that's right, because he looks white as fuck, too. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) That's why I glossed over him the first time. (laughs) I remember the the, the best thing I can use to sum up Wonder Woman 1984 is I was describing the plot to other Greg. Right. And he was like, wait a minute. You mean to tell me that one of the main antagonists wishes to be more like Wonder Woman and starts developing superpowers? Yep. Yep. And Wonder Woman starts losing her powers simultaneously. Yep. Yep. And those two things are completely unrelated, yes. (laughs) She lost her powers because she wished to have her boyfriend back, and she doesn't even get that. She gets an echo of his ghost haunting some other guy's body who she, she proceeds to have sex with. Which is not okay. Not okay at all. <laughs> no. <laughs> not the slightest bit. I'm gonna keep harping on it. Yeah. <laughs> it's fucked up. It's really fucked it's up. It's really fucked it's, up that nobody caught it. Yeah, it's it's fucked up because it's like, no, it's... You could say it's like, oh, well, you see if you pay attention. It's like, yeah, but you still don't have to pay a lot of attention to it. And then they, like... And it kind of ruins the rest of the movie. And then they hint at, like, some... Oh, look, she she's talking to the guy whose body Steve was in. Isn't that cute? It's not cute! No. It's not cute at all! It's really... It's it's pretty messed up, and it's hard to ignore once you notice it. Creepy! Yeah. What a creepy movie! Yeah. <laughs> creepy, tone-deaf, weird geopolitics. I don't fucking... Yeah, it's like the whole thing of, like, everyone grants a wish. One of them, one of people who grants a wish is actually a terrorist who I think wishes for, like, America to be nuked or something like that? No, it was Ronald Reagan wished for more nukes. Oh. I mean, it wasn't explicitly Ronald Reagan, but it was Ronald Reagan. It was pretty much Ronald Reagan, yeah. And at the end, it was like, oh, I rescind my wish. It's like, bullshit! (laughs) 
Yeah, like he's going to do that. Like, let's, and also, well, with again, with the terrorist students, like, where, where, where we were in the 80s? Hell no. <laughs> Those would probably be the two wishes that would still hold ground, if anything. Yep. <laughs> Next up was Zack Snyder's Justice League. Which, which neither of us have watched. Nope, still not. Still gotta get that watch party together. Yes. But spending $70 million on something to send it to streaming probably wasn't the smartest idea, especially not when a lot of the support for it was drugged up by internet bots instead of actual fucking human beings. Right. You dumbasses. <laughs> you got played. Yeah. Then the Suicide Squad happened. Which was good and grotesque. Amazing! I'm so mad at Warner Brothers. This movie got kneecapped by them doing the simultaneous HBO Max release. Mm. Because unfortunately, it's an R-rated movie while COVID was still going on. Of course people were going to stay home and watch that one. Yeah. Still has still one of the very few movies that has a scene that I look at and go, I could have gone my entire life without ever seeing that. Yep. <laughs> oh wait, there's two I haven't seen on this. Oh, which one? Yep, we'll get to it. Okay. Yeah, the Suicide Squad was tremendous, but at that point, too little too late, unfortunately. Yeah. Sadly. Between previous mistakes and COVID, ugh. Right. The theatrical model still hasn't really recovered. There are exceptions, obviously, but on the whole, nobody's making the money they used to. Right. And then, a year later, the hierarchy of power in the DC Universe didn't change at all. Because <laughs> Black Adam came out with a little baby firecracker sparkle at the box office and sadly enough that's probably the best performing dc movie we've had out of the last like five yeah 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 pretty all much. because the rock was trying to position a shazam villain mm -hmm. as the linchpin of this comic book hero centric universe because he just can't leave well enough alone can he? <laughs> the world is a vampire Dun, 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 dun. Is it me or did it feel like a lot of movies and trailers started using that song after Shiz after Black Adam? And the only one I remember is Last Voyage of the Demeter, and that one actually makes sense to an extent. <laughs> fair. So I'm not going to give Black Adam credit for that. That's fair. I mean, Black Adam wasn't the worst thing. It was no. just honestly, I still maintain that it was actually a pretty good movie. Very, 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 very low on what I would consider good, mm. but it's not bad. I feel like the biggest problem is just. They don't make Black Adam villainous enough. Hmm. They treat him like, oh, you're this irredeemable bad guy. He's really not. Yeah. The Justice Society's just as bad because they work for Amanda Waller. <laughs> yeah, by default, you, you lose. You willingly. Much, yeah, you, you go from A to D minus if you're willingly working under Amanda Waller. You are like 51% or 60%. Yeah, the fact that, the fact. <laughs> Hawkman has the balls to look at Black Adam and go, heroes don't kill. Let me go report back to my boss, Amanda Waller. <laughs> good old blow people up with a bomb in their neck, Waller. Yeah, good old shoot shoot my other government agents when they start to know too much, Amanda Waller. Good old Amanda Suicide Squad Waller. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking idiot. Yeah. That was disappointing. Honestly... Pierce Brosnan and, if I'm honest, also kind of The Rock make that movie. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and I agree with that. But he's really only good in those scenes where Black Adam is being, like, thoroughly arrogant. Yeah. <laughs> Just busted through doors all the time. Okay, there was also that one bit where he keeps trying to get the catchphrase out that that one kid suggested he uses. And he, Tell them and, the man in black. <laughs> and it, people keep dying before. It's just like, I know there was one in particular where he tries to do it, person dies, and he just looks so annoyed with himself. It's just like, uh. <laughs> uh Did you get any information out of him? I did not. <laughs> Waits for him to land, too. Yeah. Like, you could have grabbed him, you idiot! <laughs> That wasn't I, great. It's it's such a weird minor thing because I'm pretty sure they did it be, to make it look badass, but it was hilarious to me speaking of doors, the whole thing of how he walks through a wall and you just have like 10 different camera cuts of the rock walking through a wall and it's so ridiculous and it cuts back to being funny. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like we could just like, because the rest of these came out this year. Yeah. So, I mean, honestly, same with Black Adam. You, you could just watch our uh, previous episodes of Under the Bridge. For uh, more comprehensive thoughts. And while you're doing that, also subscribe to the Scarlet Troll for our shorts on Under the Bridge, as well as Spoiler Explained Comics. Yeah! <laughs> Good plug! Yes! Like, comment, subscribe, whatever you want to do. Engage, Share the engage. video around. Yes. <laughs> but to briefly go over it, Shazam! Fury of the Gods. Not bad. There were some confusing choices. Uh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Mostly, why'd you make up new villains? 
You didn't have to do that. That's right, Shazam's got plenty. Because right, these villains were unique to the movie, weren't they? Yep. Hmm. Completely original. You didn't have to do it to him like that. Right. And also, there's the problem of Billy's clearly matured, but Shazam still acts like an idiot. Hmm. Doesn't work as great. No, it doesn't. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. And the family di- and the family with super po- superpowers didn't get used as much. Right. Which feels not. It feels like kind of a waste. All in all, the movie feels like kind of a waste. Yeah, which is a shame because it was still very enjoyable, but it didn't use a lot of the things that it, that could have brought it up very well. And I think it kind of underscores the big problem with Shazam as a live action concept, which is uh, the the kids are going to age up real quick. Oh, so yeah. you really got to like crank those movies out if you want to get your money's worth. Oh yeah. And there's a lot of reasons why that didn't happen, but Sale of V. <laughs> the Flash. We didn't see it. We did not see it. Still haven't seen it. You <laughs> still have not seen it. Should we fix that at some point? Probably, when I can buy a... I mean, I guess at this point I could just buy a new copy and it doesn't matter. Ezra's probably out. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure with how much time has passed, it's probably in some Walmart $5 bin. Yeah, no, not $5, but I could probably get it for like 10 15 Right. I hope. If I pay more than that, I'm getting ripped off. Yeah, eBay, buy a used one. Blue Beetle. Solid film. Solid film. Has one of my favorite uses of uh, <laughs> of Cypress Hill ever. <laughs> that was good. Yes. But, unfortunately, also kind of fucked over by, well, just the general malaise of COVID. And also, I feel like, okay, so, it's kind of hard to gauge where superhero movies are at right now. Because most of them aren't doing great. Right. But a lot of other things aren't doing great. Also right. Guardians 3 still did well. Mm-hmm. So it's, it, it's, we're in a weird spot. I think we're at this point where people don't turn out for just anything. But that's true of everything. Yeah, I feel like what's happened now is that some might call it, I know like the thing of like comic book fatigue, it's like kind of thrown around a lot. but And has I, been for years. And has been for years. But I would say if anything, we've gotten to the point where it's like something much more new is kind of needed. Hmm. Like you gotta make it really something special. Yeah, like it has to be something a lot more special and a lot more unique than what we've gotten before. I think that's a big reason why Guardians One did so well. And there's a lot of factors there. I mean, Marvel cranking out all those Disney Plus shows didn't help. No, it did not. COVID didn't help. <laughs> yeah, no, COVID didn't help nobody. <laughs> Double Strike didn't help. Oh, that's what we're calling it now. <laughs> that's what I'm calling it. I'm calling it the Double Strike. And I was like, are we talking about a Mario game Because <laughs> Blue Beetle came out during that, so nobody could promote it. Right. Which really stunk. Yeah. But that was a good movie, and it deserved to do a lot better. Mm-hmm. And before we get to Aquaman, let's just look at another problem about the DC Extended Universe. Oh, boy. Which is that they had a really bad habit of not necessarily announcing things, but of things getting out that they were working on. That never came to pass. Yes. So at any given point, you were expecting 50,000 things, and you never knew what was going to show up. Right. Case in point, Batgirl. Yeah. Man, that one still makes me sad. Yep, because the, of all the things, that one probably got canceled for some of the stupidest was, fucking reasons. When it was actually done. I think they still had to do some other stuff on it, but mm-hmm. you probably could have... Like, it, if you had spent 120 mil on that Batgirl movie... Grand total. And it made, like, 200 mil. Yeah. You'd still get more out of that than you would have gotten writing it off. Wasn't that also the, the one that they sh- that it came out that they actually showed all the people that made it? It's like, hey, this is how this movie that's never going to see the light of day? Yeah, this is what it looks like. Yeah. You should be proud of the work you got just did that doesn't mean anything. <laughs> <sighs> Terrible. Yeah. And this list isn't alphabetical. <laughs> I'm just pulling it off Wikipedia, which is why we're not going in any particular order. Right. The Batman, back when it was directed by Ben Affleck, starring Ben Affleck. I forgot about that. Right? Yeah. He was going to be directing that, and it was going to be part of the DCEU. And then he left, because the DCEU crushed his soul and apparently <laughs> exacerbated some addiction problems. Oh, no. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure there were other things. I'm, I'm pretty sure working on DC wasn't the only thing. At least I hope so. Right. And it seems like he's bounced back, which I'm happy for. Oh, yeah. I don't have a problem with Ben Affleck. The problem is... And you ever notice, everybody always, like, every time there's a new Batman cast, the internet always proceeds to declare this the worst idea ever, and then a new Batman comes out, and the wor- it, even if it's a bad movie, the worst part about it is never Batman. Yeah, it's something When else. are y'all gonna fucking learn? 
But no, this was gonna have uh, Batman fighting Deathstroke, I think. Oh, okay. And it was gonna be, I, I think, more action oriented. I don't remember. Mm. Batman Beyond. Sorry, Michael Keaton. Yeah. Oh. oh. Well, he was gonna be old Batman, and presumably there would have been a there would have been a Terry Batman. Okay. <laughs> or maybe they just would have done Michael Keaton as old man Batman and not even bothered with new Batman, but that makes it kind of a little redundant. Yeah. Yeah. The Black Adam sequel, where Black Adam was going to fight Superman. <laughs> 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 Instead of Shazam. Yeah, it's like, in, it, no. Like, I'm sorry, Rock, oh, but nah, man. son. What a stupid fucking idea. Black Canary. Mm-hmm. Which is going to have Journey Smollett reprising a role for Birds of Prey. Right. That could have been something. That could have been cool. She was decent in that. Yeah. Kind of underutilized. Like all the other Birds of Prey. Yeah. A Crisis on Infinite Earths? Never. Never would have worked. You don't fucking have it in you. I'm not even convinced Marvel can make this idea work with Secret Wars. You cannot pull this off. Is this DC's equivalent of Secret Wars? It was Secret It was Secret Wars pre-Secret Wars. Well, okay, the original Secret Wars came out first, but had nothing to do with the multiverse. Right. Secret Wars 2015 is much more a Christ on Infinite Earths ripoff. Because mm. Christ on Infinite Earths was... A whole thing, because the idea was DC Comics had an entire infinite multiverse, and they were starting to feel concerned that it was too hard for fans to follow. I can understand that. And it kind of <laughs> That's why I don't read comics. <laughs> and it kind of cheapened the stakes, because, oh, a character dies on this Earth, well, they're still probably alive somewhere else. Right. So they decided to collapse the whole thing in a one fucking Earth. Honest, was it as bad as the death of Superman? I mean, in comics, Death of Superman was great. Oh, I thought it was. I thought it was hated. No, Death of Superman was. Death of Superman was actually pretty damn good. The biggest oh. problem is that him coming back started the kind of kickstarted the whole trend of nobody dies. Ah, fair. even though they always plan to bring him back. Fair. But yeah, so no, Crisis would have been a bad idea. Cyborg. <laughs> that was one that I was kind of upset never came to be. Remember when that came out three years ago mm. in April twenty twenty? Sad. Very. Ray Fisher. Re- I I I've given to understand that he has a lot more to do in Zack Snyder's Justice League, mm. so I don't blame him for being upset about what happened with that, because that can't be easy. Right. But also, like I don't know, Cyborg's never really been. Cyborg's never been a headline superhero. No, it took him ages to get his own solo title in the comics. And I'm not saying that means anything. You can make anything work. I'm just saying, like, he's not going to have as much pull as, like, you know. Batman or Superman or something like that. Like it's, I feel like he's close to that level, but just a little bit off to where it wouldn't have worked as far as like pulling a big audience. And I've thing. always been baffled by the idea of like, oh, Cyborg became because Cyborg became a founding member of the Justice League in the New Fifty Two reboot, specifically because they want to add some diversity, which is a noble goal. Right. Problem is, Cyborg's always been more of a Teen Titans character. They didn't give him much interaction with the rest of the Justice League, so it didn't. He didn't really mesh super well. Mm. And there's a whole host of other characters you could have done instead. Like you could have done John Stewart Green Lantern instead of Hal Jordan, like in the animated show. You could have done Kendra <laughs> Saunders Hawk Girl. You could have done Vixen. You could have done Static. You could have done Black Lightning. Oh god, Static. I keep forgetting that he is part of DC. Right? Technically. Uh, yeah, okay. Point is, I don't know. The Cyborg movie was always one I was kind of weird on. Deadshot! Wow! <laughs> Wait, really? Will Smith Deadshot movie. I don't think I would have wanted that. <laughs> no, absolutely not. What a crazy idea. And then Deathstroke. Right. With Joe Manganiello, who's, who's Deathstroke in Justice League for two seconds. <laughs> Man. A Flash sequel. Yeah. But no. I'm, nope. No. A Green Lantern mm. movie. Mm-hmm. Gotham City Sirens. Wait, so wouldn't that just been a, been a sequel to Birds of Prey? Uh, I don't know. It's Harley Quinn, Catwoman, and po- Poison Ivy. Hmm. Okay. Harley Quinn versus the Joker. Oh, that sounds like fun. That sounds like fun until you would, remember it would have been Jared Leto. I would pay good money to watch Margot Robbie beat the shit out of Jared Leto. I'm yeah, but saying. they wouldn't have let him get it. They wouldn't have let her. Uh, he would have gotten away. He's a Joker. He's untouchable. Uh, it's boring. Yeah, it is boring. Our man. Who's our man again? He's a superhero who takes like some kind of steroid that gives him super strength and other abilities for an hour. 
That sounds like fun. Yeah. <laughs> well, not the steroid. That sounds god awful. <laughs> Don't do drugs, kid. <laughs> <laughs> but the pre- working that into a movie sounds fun. Jesus. <laughs> a John Constantine series. Didn't. Never mind. No, a different one. Okay. <laughs> 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 yeah, we got it. It's called Constantine. <laughs> A Joker movie starring Jared Leto? No. No, absolutely no, not. No, absolutely not. Especially sorry. not when you were already playing Harley versus Joker. You see? You see where this gets fucking nonsense? <laughs> Two Justice League sequels. Mm. Justice League Dark. Lobo. Krypton. <laughs> I might just cut this bit. I might just cut this whole section. Uh, I mean... Because we're, we're, we're not even... Oh, God, yeah, no. Well, it's just like, you can see the problem. Yeah. <laughs> Wow. Like, if you ever... If you a ever... Black Manta movie? Yeah, we got that. Twice. <laughs> Are you fucking serious? Oh, that was the movie that they announced as being about the trench. What's the trench? Those weird swarmy piranha people from the first Aquaman. Oh. They announced a trench movie coming ages ago, and everybody was like, this is stupid, why would anybody want to watch that? You know what, even... you're right. <laughs> yeah. Yes. No, but apparently... It was it was a working title to misdirect that it was a Black Manta movie. It's like you mm. didn't think maybe releasing that would have gotten more hype. Yeah. Instead of getting more people laughing at you for having no sense of direction and making movies about characters that nobody cares about, which I mean, I feel like I feel hypocritical saying that because the thing is, you can make any character in theory work, but right. when you've even got fans of the comics scratching their head, going, "Why would you make a trench movie?" Ah, <laughs> oh, Plastic Man. Plastic. <laughs> the point is, God, what a mess. Yeah. I'm but, glad it's dead. Yeah, because I feel like if it didn't die, it would have just continued spiraling out of control. Yeah. Unfortunately. Wonder Twins. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. So, Aquaman of the Lost Kingdom. Yes, uh, that is the movie that we saw, what is it, an hour ago. <laughs> just got out of, like an hour ago. Yeah. And I've already forgotten a good chunk of it. <laughs> yeah. Let me look at my notes real quick. So, yeah, this... I didn't take a lot. <laughs> oh, no. So this is the sequel to the $1 billion making Aquaman that came out in, what was it, 2017? 18. 2018. It's, so it's not been... hitting that. No, so it's been... One week since you five... looked at me. <laughs> And tell me so much about you love me. I don't. That's not the right word, so I don't, get, I don't give a fuck. Just cocked your head to the side instead of angry. Okay, I don't remember. It's been five years. Why did I write Aqua 911? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Was it because. <laughs> I'll get to it. I'll figure it out later. So the premise is it's four, uh, it's four years after the first Aquaman, which. <laughs> <laughs> That's really funny in hindsight. <laughs> yeah. And uh, Aqu- Aquaman is now married. He has a kid. He's the king of Atlantis and is frustrated by the tedium and bureaucracy and the fact that nobody listens to him, making him wonder why he's even king to begin with. And then Black Manta goes on a crusade of epic revenge because Aquaman killed his pirate dad. Hilarity ensues. Hilarity. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> There's a couple of funny moments. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> this movie is... Fine. Kind of mid. It's it's fine. Yeah. It's, it's not the worst thing I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, no. But also, again, I've already forgotten a good chunk of it, and I was already zoning out at parts of it in the theater. Because, like... Oh, don't tell me I have to have the reins here. <laughs> no, no, I'm sure I've got it. Okay. The biggest things are... The fight sequences are decent, yeah. But there are times in the underwater fight sequences where I am 100% losing track of anything that's going on. That's fair. It gets pretty hectic in some of those. Which is hard to do. In a, I know, it's hard to have a clear fight scene underwater. But you could. Yeah. You could You could just not throw up all the debris and water and stuff because, like, then the audience can see it. Yeah. It, there's several moments of, and I know it's a thing of, like, yeah, these are fantasy comic movies, so there's going to be moments like this would be expected, but there are moments, there are several moments in it where people who should not be able to survive things, survive things. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, even it's like, no, no, like, I'm sorry. <laughs> and I'm really, like, I feel like the fact that I barely remember the first Aquaman is also really hurting me, because, like, for example, Randall Park is Dr. Stephen Shin. Yes. Was he in the first movie? I have to check now. 
I don't know. I don't. I don't remember. I think because it. it uh, I'm mostly familiar with Aquaman from the New Fifty Two run, which I started reading a while back. Mm-hmm. And in that, Doctor Shin was a uh, ally of Aquaman's who helped him find out about Atlantis in early days, and then sold him out for fame. <laughs> so I feel like he was. If, if the movie went off of that, where's the cast list? Uh, uh, higher up. Higher up. That's casting. Oh, yeah, Randall Park was in there. I don't remember him in that at all. Yeah. Not even a little bit. Must, I can only assume he wasn't there for very long. I barely remember Dolph Lundgren. <laughs> you know what's funny is that in this movie, as it was going on, when Dolph Lundgren shows up, it's like, is that Dolph Lundgren? I don't know if it's Dolph Lundgren. Oh, shit, it is Dolph Lundgren. <laughs> right, Julie Andrews is in the first one. She's oh. a Kraken. Oh. <laughs> Crazy. Indeed. Absolutely nutty. No, this is... Fine. The bigger problem I have is that, like, Jason Momoa is Having really... Having the time of his life. <laughs> a little no, bit. Mm, he's really good when he's doing the, like, screaming, Woo! Having the time of his life kind of thing. Yeah. Which is why I think he'd be perfect for Lobo. He is really not that great at the tender emotional stuff. No. Like, during the scene where... I'm not sure how much of it's, like effects, because I also really hate what they did with his eyes. Oh, it's so distracting. It's so fucking distracting. When yeah. he's when he's trying to have the emotional moment with Junior, talking about like how happy he is to see that his kid has his powers, yeah, and how he can't wait to share the world with him, his eyes look like off-center, right? They do, yeah. Like, it looks, there's several moments where it's like, one of his eyes looks like he's, it's a little lazy. Yeah. And I'm just like, is it, is that, is that intentional or is that just, they, they, they put the effect on to make his eyes gold and they fucked it up? Yeah. Is that, is nobody? Did nobody? Did nobody see this? How many times did they push this movie back? <laughs> and we're still, we still got this. Yeah. We still got these fucking PS3 looking fucking. <laughs> All right. PS3 has no games. Fine, right, whatever. Okay. If I had a nickel for every time a DCEU movie had Spirit in the Sky, I'd have two nickels. There's not a lot, but it's weird that it's happened twice. Yep. Suicide Squad had it. The original, not yeah. the not the good one. Oh. That's right. Yeah. I was going to say, I forgot to ask, like, wait, what was the first instance? That was it. <laughs> I will say, looking, uh, w- w- as soon as the movie opened and the DC banner played, I was like, wow, so oh. many characters in this banner who are never going to show up in this universe. Uh, that's, honestly, that's been what I've been thinking since they started doing that. Yep. Yeah, it's like, especially for me, because the one I always wanted to see was Green Lantern. <laughs> 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 and I know, in hindsight, that's a real stupid thing to say. Oh, but man. It's, but it is a thing of like, man, I'd kill for it. Nope. <laughs> oh, man. We even get a tease of him in Justice League. <laughs> yeah. Amber Heard's not really in it. N- yeah. Doesn't have a lot to do. And also is not great when she's there. Y- yeah. The best thing she did in all the movies I've seen her in, in, the, in, in, in these DC movies, is just eat a flower. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> That is a moment that will never be topped. Because <laughs> she was just so earnest about it. She's like, I'm just going to eat this flower. Delicious. <laughs> so uh... I feel like her not being in it that much doesn't help. That doesn't help. Mm. Uh, I was kind of expecting the movie to go harder. You know what? There's one particular moment where I got a little upset because I was just like, yep. What am I thinking? Of course, these movies are all too afraid of long-term consequences. Especially when which this is doesn't the last matter. one! Yeah, which doesn't matter for this one, because it's the last one in the set. Torchic! Yeah. <laughs> Kill them all! Torchic. Uh- <laughs> <laughs> ah, Pokemon reference from you. Didn't expect that. Yeah, no, it's like, there's one specific moment where I'm like, alright, even in those last moments, it doesn't like to have consequences. I don't know if, it, I- I'm sure it was a stylistic choice, but there are some scenes where the frame rate drops, and I'm really not about it. Oh, yeah. There's a couple scenes where the frame rate drops. Drops. There's one scene. There's a couple scenes where the CGI looks like almost stop motion. Yeah, not great. Yeah, especially not for how long this movie's been delayed. So they've done <laughs> work on it. Uh, I mean, it's another, it's another not the worst adventure movie. Fair. Yeah. I feel like the best part about it is is the Aquaman Orm chemistry. Yeah. Yeah, I can, yeah, yeah, I can. They got some real bitter frenemies with history thing going on. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, we're fr- why are we frenemies? You put me in jail. Ah, don't let the past from the shit bother you. <laughs> Let's see. Yaya Abdul-Mateen II is, uh, is good as Black Manta. Oh, yeah. 
they really butchered his delivery in the trailer, though. <laughs> yeah, no, okay, the trailers for this were terrible. Yeah. At least, I can confirm, not really a spoiler, I don't think, he does not stare at the camera while monologuing about how he's gonna kill Aquaman and everything he loves. <laughs> like, he's, like, he's fucking looking in the mirror going... This is my life goal. This is my goal for the day. Yeah, it's like I'm gonna I... murder his family. <laughs> and I'm gonna burn his kingdom to the ground. <laughs> it's like I'm gonna murder his family and then act like I don't know nobody. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I'm gonna throw this brick at your car. <laughs> <laughs> That's a joke nobody's gonna get. Oh god, no. <laughs> uh Really heavy global warming thing. Yeah, which... I don't... It's the thing of, like, I understand, but I also kind of don't like how it's used in this movie, because I feel like it kind of trivializes the actual thing that we're dealing with. Yeah, right they now. really brush over it, and then kind of make like it a Like the fires. <laughs> <laughs> God <laughs> almighty. <laughs> nice. Oh, it doesn't turn off. No, nope, it does not. Welcome to the club. Yeah. You know, I really feel like just Jason Momoa is not the best pick for Aquaman, and that just kind of bleeds into the rest of this. Yeah. Nobody really feels like they're the best pick for any of this. Yeah, I know. Except Orm. Except Orm. And Black Manta. Yeah. The villains are fine. Mm-hmm. I guess his dad is good. Aquaman's dad. Mm. But mostly what I'm thinking is just, uh, oh, Boba Fett. <laughs> that's, that's the extent of it. Yeah. You know what it took when you said this, like, wait, that's right, this man is Boba Fett. I completely fucking forgot about that. <laughs> Yeah, I really don't have a lot else that's not a spoiler. Yeah. I mean, should, huh. you, should you watch this movie? Ooh. I mean, there's going to be better things that unfortunately come out on Christmas Day, I feel like. Yeah. There's probably something better out now. Yeah. It's not great. You know what you should watch? You should buy physical copies of Blue Beetle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> buy a copy of Blue Beetle and watch that instead. Yeah. But, I mean... It's not, okay, so in all seriousness, it's not offensively bad or anything. It's just, it is nothing better than mid. It's a decent-ish way to kill two hours, I guess. Yeah. It's, like, I don't want to call it bad. No, cause, well, yeah, that's why I, I don't think it's bad. I've seen bad. Yeah. That's not it. It's just not particularly good. Yeah. Yeah, I can agree with that. So, I mean, I guess, if you've been watching the DC movies, you might as well finish them off, you know? <laughs> right. You might as well close it out, end the chapter, get hyped for the next one. Rip the band-aid off. We're getting Creature Commandos late 2024, so... Oh, boy. Yeah. Yeah. Streaming on HBO Max. Oh, I'm sorry, Max. Or, Just Max. Or whatever. Have, or if this Paramount, <laughs> Paramount Max. Max. Paramount. <laughs> it's watching on Paramax. Paramax? <laughs> I can't... It's like, I'm gonna call it, they're gonna call it that too if this merger goes through. Paramore. <laughs> Still into you. Mm. Beep! Alright, guys, uh, actually, after going through the non spoiler <laughs> section, or through the spoiler section, we've determined this movie is not, in fact, worth it. As you will find out. As you will find out. Uh, in case anybody decided not to watch the spoiler section, I have decided to insert this here. <laughs> uh, so if you don't want to get spoiled on Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom, make sure to click away in 3, 2, 1. I was genuinely upset that the dad didn't die. Right! Not, right! And it's not because I dislike his dad. His dad's great. But it's the thing of, like, it's okay to have consequences. Yeah. <laughs> you could Like, okay. I'm glad they didn't kill the baby. Yeah. Because... Oh, God, no. <laughs> I don't think they could have recovered from that. No, absolutely not. That would have been terrible. But I was fully expecting, okay, if they're not going to kill the baby, they're at least going to kill the dad, right? When Manta invades the house and steals the baby. Yeah. No. The dad lives. <laughs> the dad fucking lives. It's like, what's the point of that? Just have a fucking... Like, keep the cycle of revenge going. Or rather, keep the opportunity for the cycle of revenge going. Yeah. And then it's a good character moment for Aquaman, where he tries to save Black Manta's life at the end anyway. Yeah. And then have Manta go, never. And then he just lets go and falls to his death and, mm, what you say? <laughs> That was the most mm, what you say scene ever. Bye, son. Bye. <laughs> so, uh, Black Mant is possessed by the Black Trident, which is the relic of an ancient evil king That's, from Necros. Necros, either Necros or Necro. Which 
once again, it's like... Hmm. We should remember this! We just saw it! Yeah, and it's like, but my whole thing with that, too, is like, hmm, necro, zombies, black trident. Oh, yeah, no, no, on-the-nose nonsense here, huh? What's his name? Cordex? <laughs> sounds like the name of a camera company. It sounds like a classification of insect. I mean, someone's gotta have a written-out plot. The movie just came out. Yeah. Cordax. Cordax. Yeah. That was, that... Necris, yeah. In the He's m- a World of Warcraft-looking motherfucker, all right? <laughs> like, the end of the whole last scene where they're in Necros trying to get Necros, whatever it is, trying to get Arthur Jr. back from Black Manta, the whole thing fe- plays out like, it looks like a World of Warcraft raid. Yeah. It's like, oh, we gotta storm the game. <laughs> <laughs> Randall Park's good in this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. As the in-over-his-head hapless science guy watching his boss slowly descend into insanity. <laughs> Literally walks in his boss talking in the li- talking into a mirror. Oh no. Yeah. <laughs> He's going this crazy. Yep. Really stupid one. They there's that one weapon that they call the hydro cannon. But it shoots Just lasers. lasers. What makes it a hydro cannon? The fact that it's underwater? You yeah. can't just slap hydro and aqua on shit <laughs> and expect it to make sense. Yeah. It's like, it's not a bat credit card, alright? <laughs> you can't... I carried it on me in case of emergencies. <laughs> you can't just, you can't just put... There's not even a logo on it. What makes it a hydro cannon? <sighs> Nothing! It's a laser cannon. It's like, turns out it's the... No, wait, wrong franchise completely. I'm gonna rescind the joke I was getting ready to make. No, go for it. I was gonna say... <laughs> It was going to make a Peter Parker created it. <laughs> yeah, it's like from, from Parker, because I forget it was called Parker Industries. Like, no, completely different. Like, just... Oh, don't remind me of Parker Industries. That was a terrible run. <laughs> <laughs> what do we do with this hip young single Peter? Let's make him a tech mogul who does work with Beijing. Mm. No, wait, it wasn't Beijing. It was... Was it Russia? No, it was, it was China, I think. Mm. I mean, that would be Beijing. Yeah, maybe it was Beijing. I'm thinking of Hong Kong that's separate. Hong Kong. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> this isn't about Spider-Man. No. But we could make it about Spider-Man. We could. That would probably be more interesting. <laughs> I think I'm taking it back. I don't think this is worth it. No, yeah. There's... Uh... Let's see. A lot of this movie is Aquaman lamenting about how he hates his job. Dealing with his shitty ass government counsel. His kid pees in his mouth. His kid pees in his mouth. <laughs> one time, one time, like perfectly. The other time misses, and then he gets trolled by Amber Heard. Um, right, because Vera veers it into his face, which is like uh, I don't know. For me, that's grounds for divorce. Yeah, it's like I'm like that's actually pretty shitty, dog. No, it's pissy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's a pissy attitude. <laughs> uh, I feel like I've already forgotten most of the first act. In particular. Well, yeah, like, I remember the bits after he gets Orm and they go adventuring around. Mm-hmm. Something, something, Fisherman Kingdom, something, something, group of ascetics who use blood for moisture instead of water. Yeah, which is vampiric. I feel like the biggest problem is, like, I'm more interested in the in the politics of Atlantis than I am in Aquaman. I am too, but I would probably want to rip those people's heads off out of sight. I'm pretty sure that the whole thing going on there was supposed to be an allegory of what's going on with us. Uh. And it's the thing of, like, alright, I genuinely... Because it's the whole thing of why, I like... It reminded me of why I like the prequel um, set of Star Wars. Okay. About all the world going on. But I realized with this particular group, it's like... No, I want, on one hand, I do want to watch the day-to-day of you people doing your job. On the other hand, I'm pretty sure I would just reach through the screen and rip your heads off. <laughs> uh, warm Naruto running. Because <laughs> he doesn't know how to run. I like how... Yeah, you know what? It was just like, alright, I see what you're trying to do, but it still looks stupid as fuck. <laughs> it looks stupid as fuck, but it's because he genuinely doesn't know how to run. Because he has spend any time on the surface. Yeah. Oh, cockroach scene. The cockroach scene, yes. <laughs> so, uh, Arthur convinces Orm that cockroaches are, la- are a land delicacy. They're the shrimp of the land. Mm-hmm. And there's a bit where Orm just takes a bite and he starts crunched on it and then his face like starts to lighten up a little bit and he just nods approvingly. <laughs> and it's like, oh. I mean, I'm sure some places they do that, but yeah, that's it's... still funny because it's Aquaman just trolling his brother. Yeah, and then, well. And then, it gets paid back in the one post credit scene, yeah. which mm, that's that is not a the ending of this. Burger. The ending of this movie is fitting, I think, yeah. for the DCEU as a whole. Because yeah, yeah, you know what? Yeah, thinking about it, considering that the whole set is over, 
the the ending I, I will say vibes with me a little bit more. It's like, hey, you were actually you were actually building something and you dropped the ball. So that is the DCEU in a nutshell. Because <laughs> it's 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 Arthur giving a speech to the United Nations. To the United Nations because Atlantis has revealed itself and they're gonna work to undo the global warming damage that Black Manta did because Which is, most of the global warming crisis is boiled down to oh Manta's burning some magical fossil fuel that's accelerating the damage because he wants to release the frozen king or what's he yeah that's the one Necro you ne- just said Cor- his name Cordax. too that's <laughs> I was it gonna say, you just said his I name. just said it <laughs> fuck I take it back this movie's not worth it yeah no hell no I'm uh, gonna have to re I'm gonna I might have to splice <laughs> that into the like do a- I might not actually do this but. So, so they're working under the damage. He's doing a big speech about how we all need to work together and uh, new generations and melding of worlds and what have you. And then he just goes, "I'm a, I'm a, I'm a king. I'm a father. I'm a brother, and I'm an Aquaman." Woo! The movie ends. Movie ends. My and favorite, it's like, mm. so my favorite part about that, honestly, was that when he has this announcement, the council is like washing shots. And it's pretty clear that he did not run it by them. And that was my... I, when that happened, I realized, we like, didn't wait! See, oh, well, right, we saw the council, like, oh, you meant the Atlantean council. I thought you meant the UN. I'm like, no, we didn't Atlantean, see the reaction. The Atlantean council just being like, wait, what is he doing? I'm like, wait, that's right! He's fucking Aquaman! Why does he need to talk to you about shit? Yeah, <laughs> just do it. Yeah, it's just like, what's the worst that could happen? Yeah. What are you going to do, kill him? Maybe an Aquaman 3... Th- oh, wait. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, okay, so it's it's still not a bad movie, but I think the fact that I'm struggling to think of Things. much of anything. Yeah. Death by Whale Song. Oh, when they used the... That like, was dumb. It was kind of dumb, yeah. Because they have a sonic can- The bad guys have a sonic cannon that they've been using to disrupt the Atlanteans' nervous systems. And Arthur gets the idea... Ah, what if we use a different freak, the same frequency, but louder? And apparently the answer is whale song. I didn't know whale song was capable of attacking the nervous system. I just thought it was a communication method. I'm pretty sure you made that up. That's nonsense. Yeah. That's just an excuse to give his ability to talk to fish relevance, which you didn't need to do. You really didn't need it. Yeah, it's like when you said that, it's like, so we're getting like, what, electronic warfare planes? All the whales show up. All right, that works too. And it doesn't. <laughs> then a bunch of people die. <laughs> yeah, and they do it honestly in a really cold way because it's thinking like, all right, so the the ship's gonna explode, right? It's like, no, literally just the cabin explodes, but the ship is still fine. Like you see, just fire in the windows of the cabin that all phase out. I was like, oh, that's actually kind of fucked up. I guess it makes sense that we're orcas there. Orcas mm-hmm. fucking hate us now. <laughs> yeah, I can't blame them. Yeah, they do. Nah, Black Manta's theme was cool. Oh, yeah. It's very... I, you know what? Both Black Manta's theme... I know it's a very low bar, but both Black Manta's theme and Aquaman's theme are nowhere near as ridiculous as the Wonder Woman theme. And that is a and that is a, a blessing. That is such a I blessing. I never have to hear it again! <laughs> it's over! It's so fucking over! Thank you! Oh, man, that's the greatest gift I could have gotten all year! Remembering that I never have to hear the... <laughs> Ever again in my life in one of these. Ah! Turns out there's another Wonder Woman movie, and they still cast Junkie XL to do it. <laughs> Once again, this is a radio show, so you can't see his face. But that uh, was worth it. <laughs> it was a radio show. Someone might actually be paying me. To do it. <laughs> so no, this is this is kind of nothing, wasn't it? Yeah, a little bit. It's almost like I've spent. Ten years fussing over the inner workings of this for absolutely no reason at all. Mm. Just they could do it over again. To another ten years. Yeah! (laughs) All right, existence is meaningless! Life is what you make of it! Uh, Hell yeah. In that spirit, I really appreciate you guys listening to this nihilistic (laughs) ramble. From from the both of us. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Next week, we got a few options again. There's Ferrari, there's the color purple, there's something else. I don't remember what it is. What drops Christmas Day? Let me find out real quick. Yeah. Oh, the boys (laughs) in the boat. Who cares? I uh, kind of want to see that. But Ferrari is definitely a bigger draw for me personally. For me, here's where it goes. It goes the color purple up top, then Ferrari a little bit underneath it. Right. Then anyone but you. <laughs> oh, you have fun. Migration. With that 
Mm. Watching Aquaman again. <laughs> Boys in the boat. Yeah, uh, if you if you watch anyone but you, I will let you have fun with that because I have no des- desire to see that train wreck of a movie. Uh, I kind of do. I kind of mm. do. <laughs> it looks just so infuriating. Regardless of what we do, thanks so much for listening, everybody. Hope everybody has a happy holiday on and whichever a, holiday you choose to celebrate. And a safe holiday as well. Yeah, stay safe, guys. There's some real some real wackadoos out there. Two of them in this recording booth right now. Hell yeah. Yeah! <laughs> Not that we never actually heard anybody. <laughs> I feel like that just is saying that the standard <laughs> made it worse and I yeah. should just cut it. And anyway, thank you so much for listening. This has been <laughs> under the... Bridge. I mean, maybe if somebody offered me $10 million to, like, Whack a director I don't like upside the head. <laughs> Just upside the head. Yeah, yeah. I do a violence. Uh, I do that one violence. That's fair. I can understand that. Doesn't matter. This has been <laughs> Under the Bridge with Cody, a.k.a. the Scarlet Troll. And with Greg, a.k.a. Greg. And we'll catch you guys next week. Goodbye, everybody. Bye.